which was eaten for long ages in the past. Now, however, that that truth has been brought out into the open through the writings of the prophets, and by the command of the eternal God, it is made known to all nations, so that all may believe and obey. To the only God, who alone is all wise, be glory through Jesus Christ forevermore. Amen. Amen. Wow, thank, thank you. you. Let's, Let's clap for our sister. sister. Let's clap for her. Yeah, that's really good. What, what translation is that again? Okay, we need to, you need to um, you know tell us that you know so that we can. That's a that's a very beautiful way to put it. Okay, Romans sixteen. She read from verse twenty five. It says, "Now to him who is able to strengthen you." Another translation says, "Establish you." In talking about God's will, the design of God is to do one particular thing, is to reveal the truth of God. We live in a society, or let me say, in a world system that is principally based on deception. That is, everything that constitutes the world is rooted in deception or if you like deceit or lies are we together so everything that as long as god is concerned the world its systems its principles its philosophies its perspectives is all rooted in a lie that is it is not true and how did we get there? We learned of the story in the Bible in Genesis when God finished his work, built the garden, you know, made it very nice. And then the serpent's job, who is referred to as the devil, was just one thing to remove the truth that has already been given to mankind through Adam, to remove that truth and present something else that is what the world is based on so when you hear the world all of that thinking is based on a lie and so jesus came and began to say some things that people have never heard before even though it has been prophesied but when he came he now started saying i am the way the truth and the life. Nobody can come to God except by me. He started causing a lot of confusion. He said, are you, that's the, the Pharisees, the people that were alive during Jesus' time. They said, are you older than Abraham? How can you say all these things? So the revelation that we are learning and we are living through today came as a result of the coming of Jesus Christ, who is God in the flesh. Now, the entrance of that same word is what makes us believers, or if you like, Christians. So everything that Satan will try to do, the world will try to do, is not to make that word effective. Let's say amen. So everything will be against that word or at best water it down. So the will of God is that all of us should be able to walk in the reality of the truth of Jesus Christ. Let's say amen. So in Romans 16, Paul, don't forget, Paul also did not know about this truth like that. He thought that what the Christians were saying was what? He thought that was the lie. So he was fighting the Christians. As many of us, maybe at some point before God had mercy on us, were doing, were fighting God. They say, go to church. You say, I don't want to go to church. They say, hear the gospel. You say, no, I don't want to hear the gospel. It's just, um, you know, this thing. We were, you know, fighting what? The truth that is going to make us 
in the image and likeness of God. That will make us work out the will of God for our lives, for our communities, and at large. So is that will that we are talking about this morning, that we say, living in God's will. So Apostle Paul, when he was writing to the Romans, he now started telling them, he said, listen, this thing I'm telling you, it was hidden before. People did not know it as they know it as I'm explaining it to you. That's, I'm, I'm paraphrasing Paul. They, don't, they didn't know it like that. They just thought it was go to the temple, you know, kill bulls, kill animals, all of that. He now said it was hidden before. But now it's what? It's now open. So this morning... What we are saying is that you have come to church. We have all come to church now. But there may be certain aspects of your life that might not necessarily be in conformity with the will of God. So what this is going to now do, it will now help you and I to be able to now apply it to our lives, to our church, to our communities. Those that maybe you are functioning in one capacity now, when you hear this word, you say, oh, so I didn't just come to church for coming sake. I'm coming to church because God has a will, a plan for me. It's not just by accident that I came this morning. It's not just because I, I wore a fine jacket. No, that provision of a fine jacket is to be able to help me in the will of God. Let's say amen. All right, so... I've mentioned three things. I said number one, all of the world system is a what? Is a what? Is, say it, somebody's saying it. Say it out, say it loud. Is a what? It's a lie. Very good, that's the first thing I said. I said everything you see, what is called the world is a, is based, let me put it that way, is based on the world. Before I go further, what do you understand by the world? Let's even start from there. When, when you hear the word world, W-O-R-L-D, what do you understand by it? What do you understand by it? It doesn't, there's no right or wrong answer. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. That seed revealed himself. That seed is Jesus Christ. Okay. In Romans chapter 8, verse 11. Let us read. Is that Romans, Romans 8? Yeah, Luke chapter 8, verse 11. Okay, Luke 8, verse 11. It says, now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. He knows that people understand it. Okay. So when the word of God comes, if you don't have a good seed, All right. heart, it will come and it will bury. Okay. It will not affect you in the prosperity. Okay. So he always explain the parables to his disciples. He okay. Said, uh, you, they have, God has given you the parables so that you will understand it. But okay. those people, when they hear it, they will Understand it. Amen. Amen. Okay. Okay. Amen. So the word refers to those that can't um, comprehend the teachings of God. Okay. All right. So the audience, the word is a different audience. All right. That's a good way. Thank you, sir, for that explanation. Yes, sir. What do you understand by the world in quotation marks? Yes, sir. The world is an object. An or object? A, or a system that is at the control of the devil. Okay. Or allow me to put it this way. It's a playbook of the devil. All right. Okay. Beautiful. System, object of control of the devil. All right. These are very, this, in fact, this is almost another teaching. <laughs> Amen. All right. Any other one? I'll mean it on those ones. What do you understand when you hear the word, world, W-O-R-L-D? The seeds, okay? Any other one? We'll take one more. 
Yes, when you say the world, what do you understand by the world? Yes, give it, please. Uh, okay, let me get it. I got it. Hallelujah. That uh, you know, in John one one, okay, we talk about the word that the God was the word, okay, and with word, it means and the beginning in Genesis one one, okay, the word is the beginning of the uh, heaven and earth, okay. The word is the beginning of the word. Uh, God works. Okay. You know? God the works. Wo yes. Okay. Because the word is Jesus. Even okay. is God. Because it's the beginning. Yeah. It's the w O R L D. L uh, we are talking about this. Yeah. The world. W O R L D. The world. The world. Yes. If we are talking about the world. Okay. The world is is in. Um, I can explain it in two parts. Okay. The world, you know, God is the one that created the world because there's no word. There was no word before. Yes. But when God said, there, let there be light, mm -hmm. everything that polluted, God put it in order. Okay. And he created the world. Mm -hmm. That's the world. And we are in the world. We are enjoying the world. And uh, uh, another way. Yes. We call the world now mm -hmm. is for Satan because Satan is the ruler of the world now. Amen. We are Jack. Amen. Amen. That's, let's clap for all the. That's a very good explanation. So you see why it's important for us to understand all these things we're talking about because if we don't understand it this way, the same problem that has happened from the beginning is what is still happening now where people don't understand certain things. And because of that, Satan is able to capitalize on those things. For example, we talked about the world now, and we have said so many things. Somebody said, the world is a system of deceit and is controlled by Satan. It is not referring primarily, you know, primarily to just the physical things that we see around, things we can eat, things we can... Um, you know, drink and things like that. That's the natural creation that was given to man, you and I, that Satan now did what? Now took control over. Because of that principal thing he did, everything that we are now doing now is now almost like in contrast to God's will. Because to go out, to walk, to eat, God had a plan on how we are going to do that. We will go and the earth will produce its fruits, reproduce after its kind, and things like that. But because the world was now hijacked, we now have to labor, we have to strive. Things that were very easy for everybody is now coming under so much control. In fact, in the 2024 now, believe it or not, even the way you view natural people now is no longer under your direct control. Are we together? Am I saying the truth? To determine even who is who is no longer under the direct control of individuals. You have to subscribe to a policy that will now tell you who is who. That's the reality of the truth. That's the system that Satan has put in place to always distort God's natural plan. So if you're a concerned believer, you'll begin to see these things as a direct hindrance to God's plan. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So Romans 16 verse 25 is where we started from. Romans 16 verse 25 talking about living in the will of God. Now, how many types of man did God create? (laughs) 
<laughs> How many types of man did God create? Somebody said four. Somebody said one. Okay. How many? <laughs> Somebody said two. How many types of man did God create? We are talking about living in God's will, right? We've talked about Romans 16 uh, from verse 25. We said, you know, all this. Somebody stole this. Somebody. Okay. Now, how many types of man did God create? One, four, two. Which one are we subscribing to? Yes, sir. Oh, one. Okay, that's okay. One. Oh, who knows? Oh, uno, numero uno, right? <laughs> All right. Which one? Only one? Okay. So how many types of men does the Bible talk about? This is, this is a class, so it's supposed to... It's supposed to... It's supposed to exercise... You said two? Okay. Can you help us with the two? Oh no, who, who are those for one? Let's start with the ones. One, okay. So, one, two, anybody? Somebody said two. Four, okay. So now, from scriptures, which type of man did God create? Somebody said Adam, all right? Now, how many types of men are mentioned in the Bible? How many types of men? Somebody said one. Okay. You're all correct. Romans, or let's do Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Somebody please read that for us. No, 126. 2 and 6. Yes. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, can we agree that this is God's plan for man? Okay, very good. Now, let's go to John. The book of, please, you, if you have a Bible, you know, endeavor to, let's look at it together. John chapter 1, let somebody read from 10 to 12 or 13. Yeah, Grandma, go on. Yes. Wait, please. It said who? Who was in the world? The word was what? in the world, okay? And even though God made the world through him, who did not recognize him? So, somebody came. Please listen very carefully. We've talked about the first type of man. Now, Bible is now saying that even though the word of God came, the world did not what? Did not recognize him. Next verse, grammar. 11. Okay. Please hold on, ma. He says, He now came again to his own people in the world, and they did not what? They did not receive him. Verse 12, ma. But as many as received him, yes. to them gave the power to become the sons of God. Please hold on, ma. It says now some people that were in the world now believed in the W-O-R-D, the world, and then something now happened to them. They received the ability to become another type of man. To become what? Another creation. Verse 13, man. Which were born. Mm -hmm. Not of blood, okay. nor of the will of the flesh, uh -huh. nor of the will of man, okay. but of God. Amen. Amen. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Are, Are you getting it now? So, there is another type 
of creation, even though they are all existing in the same world. The Genesis chapter 1 that we read, that is everybody, created everybody, biological means of reproduction, all those things, that's for everybody. But God is now talking about another type of creation that is not born by natural means, but by the word of God. Have we seen it in, it's in your Bible? So what you and I are experiencing is birth by the W-O-R-D, word. It's birth by faith in Jesus. That's another type of creation. 2 Corinthians 5.17. 2 Corinthians 5.17. 2nd Cor another let's um my peep, my brethren on this side can read too you know 2nd Corinthians 5:17 yes yes is what is what a new creation yes ma'am okay now this walk that has been done. Is it done by natural means? Yes or no? It is done by the supernatural power of God. So when I said how many types of men did God create or the Bible talk about, I am referring to what happens when people begin to live in the will of God. Living in the will of God means that we are now a new creation. So our reality is new. Our passions, that is what drives us, what we thirst after, what our heart pants after, is totally different from what somebody that is just a natural man is going to be feeling after. So when you say, I want to go to church, I want to pray, I want to read my Bible, I want to, you know, fellowship with the brethren, I want to do outreach, I want to learn how to, I want to learn a skill that I can use to be a blessing to my environment, I want to sew, I want to tithe, I want to, all those things are, is a product of the reality of living in God's will. Living in God's will begins to produce these things organically. Are we together? Second Peter chapter, or is it first Peter now? One second. Let's do one second. Let me let me bring up that scripture. Make sure. First Peter two and two. First Peter uh, chapter number two and verse two, please. As as what? As newborn babies. As newborn babies. Now, this newborn babies is it talking to you know natural newborn babies? Yes or no, class? It's talking to those that have experienced the reality of what the new creation. Go on, man. Yes. That you may grow thereby. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's it. First Peter 2 2. Thank you, ma'am. The living in God's will will begin to produce hunger. It will begin to produce a desire to be filled with the truth of God. So, this morning, what we have been emphasizing is that the truth of God's word will produce hunger. It will produce a desire to understand what the truth of God's word is. There are many options in our world today. In fact, there are many places you could go or we could go. There are many things we could desire is worth our time, worth our attention, worth our investment, any other thing you want to put there. But for the reality of those 
that are now in Christ, this is what the Bible says is their characteristics. Hunger for God's word. Hunger for fellowship. Desire to love. Desire to be like Jesus Christ. Desire to fellowship, etc. So the creation of God, yes, in Genesis chapter number one, it talks about being in the image and likeness of God, like we said. But when that happened, there was a necessity for a rebirth that came to us through the word of God or the word that became flesh. John 3, 3. John chapter 3, verse 3. John chapter 3, verse 3. Jesus answered, I am telling you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God without being born again. Living in God's will starts from being born again. Born into the family of God. Born into the realities of God. Born into the desires of God. Born into the passions of God. Is he everything that, you know, God is passionate about? Huh? Is somebody, yes, no? Okay. Can you tell me, give me an example, Brother John? What's God passionate about? Okay, let me not, let's not start with God since we are in church. What is the world passionate about? What's the, <laughs> what, let's, I said, since we're in church, let, let me rephrase the question. What is the world passionate about? That way, it's just easy to contrast it. I said, the word, W-O-R-L-D. What is the world passionate about? Yes, sir. Somebody said, money, materialism, and what? Power. Okay? Is God not passionate about power? Is God not passionate about power? Behold, I give unto you power. So, God is passionate about power. The world is passionate about power too. Satan is passionate about power. He operates from power. Ezekiel 28, he was created in the, you know, in the mountain of God, dressed with all adorned, everything was under him before he said, he said, listen, I want to be like God. So Satan is passionate about power. He said, I want to set my kingdom on the sides of the north. I will be like God. I will ascend on high. So Satan is passionate about power too. All right? But you are right. Very correct. Yes, ma'am. Fame, attention, and ego. Uh, is God not passionate about fame? That my name will be mentioned above all the names. There's no other name uh, above all the nations. Doesn't God want to be famous? Ask some class. I'm, you are correct. I'm not saying you are not correct. I'm just trying to get us to see it from our perspective. Is God not passionate about being famous? Class, what do you think? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. The world is passionate about politics. Okay. Is God not passionate about politics too? Okay. Help us. Yeah, take your seat. Yes, this is Sunday school class. So you sit down, you take a Bible and listen, okay? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. What do you get? What do you think, class? Any anybody is saying something? What's the right with the mic? Okay. Okay, please help me. Thank you. So you are saying God is impassionate about politics. Okay? All right? Okay? But what's he passionate about in place of that? That's what I'm trying to get from you. Okay? All right? Amen. Hmm. See this perspective? All right? Any other one? 
Somebody said politics, somebody said fame. That's what the world is passionate about, all right? Hello. Yes, sir. You see, everything is opposite. Hmm. That's good. That's it's good. Okay. What God is looking for. Hmm. All right. I see your point. That's a really good one. So. Okay. Verse twenty-two. All right. Coming. Twenty-three. Twenty-two to twenty-three. Okay. Corinthians chapter five, verse twenty-two. The fruit of the spirit. Uh huh. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. That's really good. Thank you. So the world values things in opposite of what God values. That's basically what we are trying to say. Amen. That's a good one. So that means the will of God will always be in contrast or in direct opposition with the will of the world or with the will of Satan or with the, the fallen nature of what we have. So the next thing we are going to be doing now is to see how we can overcome these things because we are in the world and we want to live for God as Christians. We want to pursue the things that God pants after, that God values. But like you said, sometimes we find ourselves in the midst of all these things. Right? My brother. You find, your, even if you may decide not to participate, but you will find out that consciously, directly or not, so long as you are existing in that sphere of authority, you'll be affected by those policies. Am I correct? So now the question is that since our, we are foreigners as sojourners, like the Bible said in the world, how do we now overcome these challenges to live in the, war, in the will of God? That's where the meat of the topic is. How do we now overcome this? Not just even politics at times. Sometimes it could even be in your own household, right? You could just, by product of maybe where you're coming from, Maybe how people see your walk with God, it might not necessarily be agree, or you know, everybody might not necessarily agree with you, with your faith, right? Am I correct? Not necessarily that it even has to do with, you know, the, the, the politics of the day. But even in your own, in your, in your own setting, your own setup, it might come up as an issue. It might even be in your own self. Maybe... Studying the word of God is difficult, per se. Maybe praying is a challenge. Maybe worshiping God is a, is a challenge. You know, you don't find it easy. I don't find it easy. You know, something like that. How do we now begin to overcome that? The first thing I think is very important is a class like this that can explain the importance of understanding this. When we understand the importance, the next thing to do is to begin to work on those aspects so that we can overcome. Yes, ma'am. Hallelujah. Okay, so that's one solution. Joshua 1.8. Can, can you help us with the Joshua 1.8, please? Media, thank you very much. I think we should clap for our, our media team. Let's encourage them. Let's clap for them. Thank you. Joshua won it. Yes, go on, Grandma. He said, be sure that uh, the book of the law yes. is always read in your worship. Hmm. Study, study it day and night. Hmm. And make sure that you obey everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Grandma. That's one way we can begin to overcome the will of Satan. 
the will of the world, the will of the things that hold us back, that hold us down, that tend to take away God's design for us is to study and meditate on God's word. I was sharing it, was it last week or thereabout? I said anything you want to become, you have to study about it. If you want to become a doctor, they take you to a place where all you'll be doing is school, where you'll be learning about medicine. After a period of time, say about seven years or thereabout, if you pass all the requirements, guess what? You're going to become a doctor. If you want to become a lawyer, they don't take you to a medical school. They take you to a place where the word of or knowledge of the law will be, will be constantly, you know, imparted in you. If you want to be a bricklayer, if you want anything you want to become, there has to be a process of continuous impartation of that word that makes you become that very thing you want to become. Even if it's now there's um, uh, the Olympics going on. Anybody watching the Olympics? Okay, one, two people. Now, the people that are doing the gymnastics, some of them, they started doing it maybe when they were very little. They go and learn, they study, they, you know, they, 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 they stretch themselves very well. Or uh, the people that want to do basketball, they continually do it. Apostle Paul said that we should, like Christians, he used the example of athletes. Yeah? He said... He said we should be like that. So, studying God's word, learning God's word, is like preparing for a race. You have to keep studying it, learning it, sharing it. So, in, sometimes you come to class like this, and then you are able to share your knowledge. You are able to ask questions. You are able to what? Hear contributions from other people that can help you and I in the journey. Let's say amen. So somebody said Joshua 1.8. That's very good. Thank you. Any other one? How can we begin to live in God's will? The word of God. Okay. Or let me ask. How have you been able to live in God's will so far? What has helped you? Somebody said prayer. Okay. Somebody said grace. So let's start with prayer. How has prayer helped you to live in God's will? You said what now? It builds up your spirit, man. Okay? Praise God. What do we understand by spirit, man? You know, this is a mixed class. You can't just, you can't just assume that everybody understands that. Yes. What, what she said, prayer builds up your spirit man. And I asked, what is spirit man? Okay. It's your part that is connected to God. All right. Does everybody understand that? Does the class understand that? Yes. No. Okay. All right. Somebody. Okay. Yes. Because she said, prayer builds up your spirit man. And I said, wow, that's, that's very nice. I don't want spirit man. We are talking about spirit. We are talking about God. Because God is spirit. Okay. All right. the Lord.
Hallelujah. That's really good. Amen. Let's clap for our contributors. That's really good. Thank you so much. A lot of things has been said here. Let me let me mean it on the you said prayer is a means through which we can what we can live in God's will. And then the question was asked, how? It doesn't mean if I just say, uh, you know, God, thank you for today, bless this food in Jesus' name. Does you know he said she's telling us that that is how we begin to build our capacity to live in God's will. That you took a food, your food, your meal, and then you decided to pray over it. It means that you are now living in the reality of God's will. You want God to even be involved in the very food that you ate. We now said, how does it happen? Our brother explained to us, that she said, it builds up your spirit man. And then we said, what is spirit man? He explained that spirit is that part of us that connects to God. We receive the life of God through our spirit. For example, the words I'm speaking, you can't see it physically. You can hear it. Now, the word of God that we hear begins to agree with our spirit man. It begins to grow from there. It begins to develop stature. It begins to get, you know, it begins to operate from that realm. He mentioned John 1, 12 and 1 Peter 1, 23. So if you want to write that down, you can write that down. You can study it when you get home. John 1, 12 and 1 Peter um, 1, 23. That talk, John 1, 12 talks about the power to become the sons of God. 1 Peter 1, 23 talks about the, the nature of our redemption. That is, we didn't, we didn't buy it with money, with gold, with silver, with all those things. It came by the word of God and the characteristics or the characteristic of that word is what? What's, what's, what can define the, the nature of that word? First Peter 1.23, media, thank you. First Peter 1.23, there's, there's a particular nature of the word. He mentioned it, but let's put it on the board. All right. Can you give us King James for this particular one? Very good. He says, being born again, not of what? But of what? Incorruptible. That's another major difference between God and the world. The nature of the world is what is corruptible. Or the tendency to be corruptible. The nature of corruptibility. So even if you buy something today, chances are, in the next five years or thereabouts, it might no longer be relevant, right? Or it might necessitate for change. Why? Because the nature is what? Corruptible. However, the word of God is what? The next verse, or rather the next line, but of what? Incorruptible. So the word of God that we are hearing is going to last forever. You can put it back uh, on the other translation media. Thank you very much. So as long as God is concerned, everything on earth is corruptible. That is the, the systems, the thinking, the world itself is corruptible and so cannot be relied upon, cannot be trusted. But what can be trusted is what? The word of God. Isaiah 40 verse 8. The book of Isaiah chapter number 40 and verse 8. It says what? Grass withers, flower fades. But what? The word of God endures how long? Forever. So that's our testimony as believers. That's why we learn, we study, we pray, all of that so that we can be able to live in the will of God. All right. Yes, sir. Say 
Second Timothy. Does Second Timothy have up to seven? No, chapter four, verse seven. Can't. Okay, four seven. Okay, you know Timothy is my name, so that's why. I <laughs> <laughs> All right, yes, sir. Verse seven. Okay. Oh. Okay, it's on the board. Second Timothy 4 7. Give us King James, please, for this one. Media, thank you. It says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Wow. Okay? So, living in God's will requires fighting. The good fight. That's a very good one. Thank you, sir. Okay? Fighting the good fight. So how do we fight the good fight of faith? How do we do it? Somebody help us. How do we fight the fight of faith? Is it the one like uh, in the Olympics? I saw the, the wrestling people the other day and the boxing one. You know? So much drama. Anyways. Yes, sir. Say by doing God's word, or work, all right? He says that how we fight the good fight of faith is by doing the work of God. Praise God. How do we do the work of God? Yes, sir. He said walking and talking with the Lord. All right. So the work of God involves our daily walk with Him, relating with Him, facing challenges through the Word of God. All right. Any other one? How, somebody said to fight the fight of faith, we need to do the Lord's work. How do we do the Lord's work? He said walking with God, all of that. Any other way? How do we do the Lord's work? Or how have you been doing the Lord's work? That's another way. To Help us, please. Our baby, is, is the baby is doing the Lord's work. We eat every day, you know, and what? And poop everywhere. That's part of the Lord's work. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. How do we do the Lord's work? In our families, in our homes, in our church, in our community. Somebody said evangelism. What is evangelism? Okay, how do we win souls? Okay, telling people about Jesus, all right? Picking people up, telling somebody God loves you, sharing our homes, meals with people. It's part of the good work, right? It's a fight of faith. Thank you so much. Telling them the truth, all right? That's it, okay? The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So every, almost everybody now, we, we already know how to live in God's will. So when we already know how to live in God's will, the work of God becomes very easy, or rather easier. If you already know how to live in God's will, you already know you've got to pray, you've got to walk with God, you've got to talk with God, all of that, then when we assemble like this, it becomes it doesn't need too much uh, this thing. When you say praise the Lord, everybody's going to shout hallelujah. Why? Because you know that it's because of the will of God that you are present in the assembly of the brethren. So when we say raise your hands and clap for Jesus, it doesn't become difficult. When we say shout to the Lord, it doesn't become difficult because you know that that's how the will of God is established on earth. The disciples told Jesus, teach us how to pray. Say, pray in this manner. Our Father, who has in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Now, when we know that the will of God ought to be done, and we are the ones to do it, it becomes very, very easy. So it's those things that don't let us fulfill the will of God that we are dismantling, or our duty 
to dismantle. If it's to make people see clearer, we need to explain. On the road to emails in Luke 24, Jesus had to come and explain to the disciples all the things from Moses and the prophets that what was written about Jesus. If it's to cast out the demons so that people can be free to worship him, God is going to require us to do it. If it's to come like a light and hit somebody like Saul so that he can become Paul and become a you know, great evangelist, he's going to do it. If it's to empower people with their hands to work, to give them work to do so that they can be able to take care of themselves and do the work of God, it's part of the will of God, the desire of God. But when we don't do it, when we don't function in our capacity, Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll end it. I don't know, seven minutes, I'll, I'll rush your time. When we don't function in our capacity, it becomes the church, the work of God, the will of God becomes dragged down. In Ephesians 4, from verse 12, he said, listen, Jesus had to do something. He had to play his own part. Jesus, what was the part of Jesus? He said he ascended to heaven, all right? He took captivity captive and did what? And gave gifts to men. In 13, he said to some, he gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. For what? For the unity and the building of the, the, the body, the church. So the will of God is not going to come until every one of us what agrees with our own self that the will of God must be done. It can be through smiling. Some people, they can smile, and when they smile, it's anointed. You see them, they smile. Some people, they, I'm telling you. Some people, will, I know some churches people go <laughs> because they want to see somebody that is smiling. Some people, it can be, you can be musically gifted. You can sing like that. Some people, you, you can do something. But if we already know and we don't do it, it means that we want to subscribe to another will. And that's why God has to teach us has to walk with us so that we can agree to do his will. Grandma, hallelujah. Without us, we need to unite and in love. Because, you know, uh, in the upper room, the apostles, they were there, and they sat down. They, you know, they are praying one accord. If you are not one, you cannot do the will of God. And the will, the will of God cannot perfect. Amen. Anything we want to do, let us as a Christian, as a disciple, we must do it in unity. And we need, we have, it's our mandate to have the spirit of forgiveness. Forgive and forget. If you don't forgive yourself, if you don't forgive each other, it means you don't forgive yourself. Amen. Because you have nothing to get from the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's clap for grandma. So, the, 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 what grandma said was what we learned last week from Colossians 2, from verse 12, I believe, that talks about how to walk in unity. Because without that, the will of God will not be done. Even before I say that, how many of us want to see the will of God done? You want to see the will of God done in your life, in the church, in the world at large? Okay, very good. Thank you. Put your hands down. Now, this teaching, for example, this morning, is a good way to, you know, scale ourselves. The first thing we should ask ourselves, what is stopping me? from doing it. We can have a myriad of, you know, very, very cogent reasons. It can be, okay, you know, I'm going through the situation in my life. I don't have this. This is going away. And when I'm talking about the will of God, I'm saying being present with the will. Like, you wake up in the morning, you, the first thing is that, am I in God's will? That's what I'm trying to say. It might not necessarily be, you know, the conventional way of uh, thinking about it. But if you wake up in the morning and say, 
Am I in God's will? Am I, am I doing the things that are pleasing God? Am I walking in line with God's plan for my life? If that's not the first thing that maybe when you wake up in the morning, you want to ascertain, it might be a good time, or this might be a good time to just look at it and, you know, just determine it. Then what is not making me walk in it? Is it that I'm not convinced of the gospel? Is it that I have not found myself in a place where I can really work it out, where I can really press on to know him? Is it that I've not had a direct experience with the Savior to, to have the confidence of the gospel or the assurance as written in Hebrews 11? Those are the things that we should, we could rather be asking ourselves. That way we are empowered to ask the right questions. We have our teachers, we have our pastors. Now you can go and meet them, either during the week or Sunday. If you are in a situation right now, maybe, for example, accommodation, housing, all those things, it's a present challenge, and because of that, it wants to form a mountain. The good news is that there is no excuse too big for God to handle. God has made a way out that right now, if you decide that this Sunday, I want to become another man like we learned today. Genesis chapter 1 and John chapter 1 talks about two kinds of men. The one that was formed from the earth and the one that was birthed by the word. So if you decide that I'm going to live in the reality of that new man that was birthed by the word, it's possible. Every facility is available, at least as of this Sunday morning in this church, to be able to gather God's chosen people, either on the streets, either from the beautiful places, anywhere, and you find yourself in the assembly of the, or in the congregation of the believers, my assignment this morning is to let everybody know that God has a place for you to do his will. So it will not be on the neck of the, uh, the pastor or on the neck of, you know, what have you, or the teachers, if we don't fail to communicate the truth of God's word. And let me let you know this one, Satan will always find a reasonable excuse not to do the will of God, either by hook or crook. But the testimony of the believer, the assignments and the fights of faith is that men, and when I say men, I'm talking of creation, human beings, will come into the reality of the truth of God's word, thereby obtaining the incorruptible life. Praise the Lord. I hope I've been able to at least uh, pass out God's word. We talked about living in God's will, part two. And we have looked at scriptures, and we have been able to establish the fact that God wants his will to reign supreme in our life, and this is the way we can do it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you this morning for another opportunity to study, for another opportunity to teach, for another opportunity to learn at your feet. We pray that this word that has gone into us, this seed that has been planted in our hearts, will make us to go from a place of lethargy, and come into the fullness of your plan for our lives. Every distraction, everything that has been holding us back, Lord, this morning we pray that by the power of your spirit, it will be removed, and your name and your name alone will be glorified in Jesus' mighty name. Church, say amen. Thank you.